Hi, I'm Kasia, Kasia Gafarzade, and I'm the head of consulting at IDTechX. Uh, my background is in uh, electronic materials and electronic devices. Uh, but at IDTechX, I look at uh, advanced materials like graphene, I look at printed electronics, I look at OLED lighting, I look at some PV technologies and so on. And I'm also responsible for looking after many of our clients around the world. So I try to understand what they do, what their needs are, and make sure that they have the information and the analysis and the insight that they need and when they need it. So you say like uh, graphene, for example. Yes. What is that? Well, graphene, you know, on paper is this wonderful material. It has uh, super natural properties almost. It is the best in everything that it does. And therefore, because it has such a diverse and such, a, such an excellent set of properties, it can be used in so many different applications. Uh, you know, in applications from composites and batteries and electronics and many other things. Uh, but, I, but, but despite, you know, despite the, the potential on paper, there have been some bumps on the road uh, when it has come to commercializing graphene. Uh, you know, the, the, the graphene industry as a whole is still trying to find the so-called killer application. And the way companies have tried to go to the market is by uh, replacing something that already exists. Uh, so the commercialization strategy really is one of trying to get a little bit of market share on multiple fronts. And that's tough. So is it because it's expensive or it's hard to make or what's the problem? Why is it not everywhere? So far. Well, I mean, you, you said some of the problems. So, I mean, like most early stage technologies, the manufacturing of it is a problem. So, it is not easy to manufacture in high volumes and at low cost. And I think, you know, one, one problem is that it, is, it hasn't found an application in which it has a very, very unique or very, very strong value proposition. So, the story has been that I'm a little bit better uh, than something that already exists. And, uh, and I think part of the challenge is that when you try to manufacture graphene, you don't make that ideal, that perfect graphene that gives you the best properties that you know we hear from the labs. The actual, uh, you know, factory level graphene or the commercial high volume graphene is is a different type of material with not properties as great as as we've seen. But the interest is huge. You know, almost every chemical, every material company in the world will have got their hands on some graphene or will have invested in some uh, internal R and D on graphene. We are seeing a lot of activity now, interestingly, in China. So in China, there are uh, five or six companies with very uh, big announcements about production capacity. Uh, we are seeing a lot of interest in Korea, and Korea is an interesting case because there is already uh, installed uh, capacity for carbon nanotube manufacturing and also a lot of accumulated experience in the industry. And we know that players like Samsung and, uh, and LG are really aggressive in trying to pull their strings and pull the industry in Korea. Uh, so there's a lot of interest happening in Asia. Uh, What's uh, carbon nanotubes? Uh, so carbon nanotubes are... Is that the one they're talking about with the space elevator? Well, yes, they did actually, a long time ago. You know, that's, that's, that's an old story now. I mean, that, that was when the carbon nanotubes were at the, you know, at the peak of their hype cycle. There was a lot of hope, there was a lot of interest. Uh, so carbon nanotubes are, are kind of a nanotube made of carbon. And they too, like graphene, have many, many uh, wonderful properties. Uh, but again, you know, commercialization has been, uh, has been somewhat difficult to achieve and it's taken much longer than many had expected. But carbon nanotube has qualified success. So uh, I think around the world there is something like uh, uh, 270,000, 3,000 uh, tons per year production capacity. And uh, there is actual success in uh, selling carbon nanotubes as an additive uh, in, the, in the electrode for lithium ion batteries and also as an additive in composites uh, with electrostatic dissipation properties. Uh, so the industry is, exists, uh, but it has not reached the same levels that, that many had expected. And one of the challenges with the carbon nanotubes was, and still is, that it is hard to disperse. So when you add it to composites, uh, the viscosity goes up by several orders of magnitude. And this is where graphene may actually have an advantage over carbon nanotubes. Because some of the early indicators are that it is easier to disperse. And that's an advantage. Uh, and that is why we see in the industry many of the companies that started by producing just powders and now offer much more. They offer intermediary products, dispersed graphene in composites and inks and so on. And I think that's a very welcome step towards uh, commercializing graphene. So what's printed electronics? Printed electronics is, is many things. It's, it's not one thing. You know, it's, it's a manufacturing method and it's, it's an umbrella term. It can be used to describe components like transistors, memory and uh, conductive tracks 
It can be applied to make displays, lighting, photovoltaic applications. So it's, it's a very, very broad industry. And there are very many different printing methods that can be used to make printed electronic devices. So when we speak of printed electronics, we don't speak of one industry. We speak of a common thread that runs into many different industries. So it's uh, there's going to be some, some exhibitors here showing a bunch of... Uh like stuff that's in the market or stuff that's in the future only? Well, so because it is such a diverse market, if you, you know, if you try to map the different applications that are out there on the market from the R&D level to the uh, commercialization level, you see, you see you know, diversity. There are applications on the market that are already mature, high volume, uh, you know, almost old mature technology, but then there are things that are still at a much earlier stage and there's everything in between. So it's, you know, it's, it's a broad industry with with different technologies and different players at different degrees of progress. And what are you gonna? What's gonna happen at this supercapacitors uh, uh, summit here? What's what's that about? Well, supercapacitor is, is a very exciting technology. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's an energy storage device which, in so many ways, is complementary to lithium-ion batteries. It, it, it can dis discharge and charge up much quicker than you know most batteries out there, but it doesn't hold as much energy. It has, you know, it is an, old, you know, it's a big industry already. Uh, uh, it is used in uh, in cars, in buses, uh, and we think that it's going to have a role in the future. It is, you know, we think that it's a market that's going to experience a 30% growth year on year uh, going forward. And the interesting thing about this event is that uh, we've designed it in a way that there is overlap, there is synergy between the different tracks and the different conferences. So let's take supercapacitors as an example. Supercapacitors are in fact an interesting and a very promising target market for graphene. So many of the graphene suppliers that will be here, will be walking the floor exhibiting, they want to speak and they want to network with the supercapacitor people because that's where the market is. And, and you know, one key parameter about supercapacitors is that the, the performance gets better as you increase the surface to volume ratio of the electrode. So the more interfacial surface there is in general between the electrode and the electrolyte, the better the performance is going to be. And graphene, because of its, you know, because of its single layer properties, it has the highest surface to volume ratio. But of course there are many technical problems, uh, not least on how you can maximize that surface area utilization. Uh, but I think the point I'm making is that here we bring the end users and the suppliers together in one place. So is, uh, is this conference about flexible displays, unbreakable displays, uh, uh, flexible PCBs, motherboards, electronics and that like flexible batteries, is it about that also? Absolutely, absolutely. I mean one of the good things about, uh, about, about being printing, or organic electronics, not just printing but potentially printing, is that, is that it feeds into the value chain of, uh, of flexible electronics. And when we think of flexible electronics, there are many components that are needed to make that possible. And this conference focuses on, on all the components that are needed. So uh, a flexible transparent conductive film, a flexible backplane, a flexible encapsulation layer. Uh, if you need uh, flexible batteries for powering things, a flexible battery is going to be there. And also we'll have the end users, we'll have the big display makers here uh, to, to complete the presence you know, across every step of the value chain. So absolutely, absolutely. And who's going to be here at the conference? Like guys from the Silicon Valley who want to see what's going on? Uh, it's a, it's a people making the stuff? A, a bit of everything. I think one important thing about our conference is that uh, it is business focused. Uh, so we don't have a lot of academics. Uh, most of the 2,500, 2,700 people that will be walking the floor uh, will be business people. Uh, they'll be CTO level. Uh, they'll be CEO level, uh, they'll be business development managers, marketing managers, and they will come from a, a diverse set of industries. You know, the material, the chemical industry will have a big presence, uh, the, uh, the component makers will have a big presence. But one extremely important unique about our conference is that we bring some of the top end users, for example, for printed electronics. Uh, we bring some of the biggest uh, packaging companies, some of the biggest consumer good companies, uh, some of the biggest car manufacturers and so on and these are the end users that the suppliers want to connect to All right, so looking forward to a whole bunch of interesting things going on here these Absolutely. next couple of days. Thank you